the spinal cord is the lower elongated part of the central nervous system. It is the cylindrical in shape and flattened anterior posteriorly. It is flat. It contains large number of ascending and descending fibers. It is about 45 cm in length in an average and weighs about 30 gram. It extends from the first cervical vertebra till the lower border of the first lumbar vertebra. The spinal cord ends in this lower tapering end known as conus medullaris. This is the concept conus medullaris and this is the lower level of the spinal cord. In the spinal cord, there is attachment of the 31 pair of this spinal lobes are attached there. These spinal lobes, they are connected to different tissues, girdles, limbs and the visceras. This spinal lobes. In the third month of intrauterine life, the spinal cord extends throughout the length of the vertebral canal. And the spinal lobes, it exits out through the intervertebral foramen at their level of origin. These are the intervertebral foramen. After then, the vertebral column, it grows faster than the spinal cord. Therefore, at the time of birth, the spinal cord is present at the level of L3 vertebra. And again, after the, after the birth, due to gradual uh, development of the baby, the spinal cord now comes up because the vertebral column grows faster than the spinal cord more. And the spinal cord lower level, now it ends at the level of L1 vertebra. The spinal cord is surrounded by the three protective membrane, three protective meninges. The first layer is the dura mater. This dura mater is this continuation from the brain dura mater. And this, it extends from the brain till the second sacral vertebra. Till here, the dura mater is present there. This is also the dura mater in the another spinal cord. So, dura mater is present till S2 vertebra. Above the dura mater, there is a presence of epidural space which contains intervertebral venous plexuses, loose areolar tissue and some semi-liquid fat around the dura mater. The subdural space is present between the dura mater and the arachnoid mater. The spinal dura is a single layer containing only the meningeal layer of the dura mater, whereas in the cranial dura, it consists of the two layers that is the outer industrial layer and inner meningeal layer, which forms the folds. Different folds, the meningeal layer forms the fold in the cranial dura matter. But in spinal, it is only single layer. The second layer is the arachnoid matter. This arachnoid matter is present below the dura matter. It is thin, delicate, transparent avascular membrane, which covers the cord, spinal cord loosely. And it also continues with the arachnoid matter of the brain and it ends at the level of the S2 vertebra. That is where the dura matter ends and the arachnoid matter also ends at the level of S2 vertebra. Below the arachnoid matter, there is a subarachnoid space. And in between the arachnoid matter and the pia matter below, there is a presence of CSF fluid. Cerebrospinal fluid is present below to this arachnoid matter. The last layer is the pia matter. Pia matter is the thin, highly vascular membrane covering the spinal cord and it is continued below the spinal cord as this is the end of the spinal cord. It continues below as a phylum terminale. This pia matter, it presents four modification which supports this spinal cord in the vertebral column. They are number one, the phylum terminale. Number two, uh, there is a presence of the subarachnoid septum that is behind the spinal cord and there is presence of the linear splendor in anterior to the spinal cord and the ligamentum denticulatum. This ligamentum denticulatum, they are thin transparent ribbon-like bands of the pia matter. It extends from, it extends from the spinal cord laterally. It pierces the arachnoid matter and attached to the inner surface of the dura matter on the right side, on the left side. They are 21 in number. So they are all this ligamentum denticulatum, they are 21 in number.
this ligamentum denticulatum it provides supports to this spinal cord to the side to side that is attached to the inner portion of the dura mater so it gets the support laterally this ligamentum denticulatum is teeth like and the first ligamentum denticulatum is present at the level of foramen magnum so these all are the ligamentum denticulatum you can see it it's white glistening and it is toothed it supports here laterally and the last one it extends it is present at the t tubule and l1 spinal nerves so this is the ligamentum denticulatum the second modification is the phylum terminale it extends from this ponus medullaris and it is 20 cm in length and extends till the first coccygeal vertebra the phylum terminale are divided into two parts the one that is present inside the dura mater is known as phylum terminale internum and the one that is present beyond the dura mater that is the attachment of the first coccygeal vertebra it is known as phylum terminale externum and that is only 5 cm in length whereas internum is 15 cm in length it is non nervous modification of the pia mater so this holds the spinal cord from the below so there is a support of the whole spinal cord from below that because it is attached to the first coccygeal vertebra at the posterior side of uh, spinal cord there is a presence of the third modification of pia mater that is known as subarachnoid septum and this subarachnoid septum is just fenestrated pia mater which attaches the spinal cord to the posterior surface of the dura uh, mater so it also provides support posteriorly and the last modification is the linea splendis this linea splendis is present in the anterior median fissure there is the bunch of nerve fibers present around this phylum terminale that is at the center lower end of the spinal cord this bunch of the nerve fiber is known as cauda equina it resembles with the tail of the horse that's why it is named as a cauda equina as the spinal cord is shorter than the length of the vertebral canal now the length and obliquity of the spinal nerves it increases progressively from above downwards and the spinal nerve the spinal nerves they emerges through their respective intervertebral foramen so the nerve root of the lower four lumbar that is from l2 l3 l4 l5 and all the five sacral nerves and one coccygeal nerve is in combination called as cauda equina along with this phylum terminale so this is the cauda equina in in this you can see this is the cauda equina there is the fusiform swelling around the cervical and the lumbar region of the spinal cord this enlargement are present due to the presence of the large number of motor neuron to supply the muscle of the upper and the lower limb this cervical enlargement is pre is present from the c5 to t1 of spinal segment and it forms the brachial plexus so it supplies the upper limb whereas the lumbar enlargement it extends from l2 to s3 spinal segment to form the lumbosacral plexus Rather total eight cervical spinal nerves, twelve thoracic nerves, five sacral, five lumbar, and the one coccygeal nerve. Though in the vertebra we have the seven cervical vertebra, but here we have the eight cervical nerve. Then we have the twelve thoracic nerve and twelve thoracic vertebra, and five sacral, five lumbar, and five sacral, which corresponds with the five lumbar and five sacral. But in the coccyx, where there is only one coccygeal nerve for the four coccygeal vertebra, the cervical nerve it leaves the vertebral canal above the corresponding vertebra, with the exception of the eight, which leaves between the seventh cervical and the fourth thoracic vertebra. The remaining spinal nerve emerges below the corresponding vertebral level. The spinal nerve it is attached to the cord by the two roots. the anterior one is the anterior motor root you can see this is the anterior motor root 
and this is the posterior surface and there is attachment with the attachment of the posterior nerve root these are the posterior nerve root and there is the presence of the dorsal root ganglia it has the pseudo unipolar neuron in the posterior nerve root the part of the spinal cord where the spinal nerves are attached is known as spinal segment so this is one spinal segment likewise we have the 31 spinal segment where you have the attachment of the number of rootlets so this is one segment one is this is the second segment like that we have the 31 spinal segment the root is made up of number of rootlets so this you can see there is a number of rootlets arises in front of the spinal cord over certain length the rootlets of the anterior root emerges from the anterior lateral sulcus whereas the rootlets of the posterior root it emerges from the posterior lateral sulcus so this is the posterior lateral sulcus and in anterior we can see these all are the anterior lateral sulcus this is anterior median fissure and again where the rootlets are attached this is the anterior lateral sulcus in the anterior side now let's talk about the lumbar puncture so this is the lumbar vertebra in case of adult the spinal cord ends at the level of l1 vertebra whereas in case of children the spinal cord it is present at the lower border of l3 vertebra the horizontal line joining the highest point of this iliac crest passes through the spine of the fourth lumbar vertebra so the interspinal space just above and below this below the landmark can be used safely for doing the procedure this space is more more roomy and contain only fibrin terminally and the roots of the lumbar sacral and the coccygeal nerve which flows in the csa fluid so when we put the head our thumb touches the spinous process of l4 vertebra so the space above and below to the spine is safe for the lumbar puncture during this process the spine must be fully flexed with the patient seated or lying by the side the interspinal space is open up now the needle passes through the supraspinous ligament interspinous ligament and then the dura mater when we enter the dura mater there is a feeling of the loss of resistance so now we come to know we are inside the subdural subarachnoid space where the csf is present now let's talk about the blood supply of spinal cord it is supplied by one spinal artery two posterior spinal artery and then segmental arteries the anterior spinal artery is formed by the union of the small spinal branches of right and left vertebral artery in the upper cervical canal and then it travels in the anterior median fissure of the spinal cord till the phylum terminally the anterior spinal artery it supplies the two third of the surface of the spinal cord the posterior spinal artery they arises from either vertebral artery or posterior inferior cerebellar artery they runs down down on the posterior lateral aspect of the spinal cord in the line of attachment of the posterior nerve root so this is the attachment of the posterior nerve root so here we can see the two longitudinal chain of the posterior spinal artery they enter the spinal cord as anterior radicular artery and the posterior radicular artery they enter through the anterior spinal nerve root and the runs along with the posterior spinal nerve root there are eight anterior and tubular posterior radicular arteries when they reach the spinal cord they form the pile plexus around the spinal cord that is they also form the arteria vaso corona additionally there is segmental arteries present which are the reinforcer arteries of this longitudinal arteries they are the branches of either deep cervical in the upper part ascending cervical posterior intercostal lumbar and the lateral sacral arteries the posterior spinal artery 
it supplies the one third of the surface of this spinal cord. This posterior spinal artery, they sometimes gives this collateral branches. So in the posterior part of spinal cord, we can see there are four longitudinal branches of the spinal artery. One, the main branch, the second main branch, and from that they give the collateral branches. That is one in the median plane and two on the lateral side. So mostly there are three longitudinal spinal arteries, one, two posterior spinal artery and one anterior spinal artery. But because of the collateral branches, there are five longitudinal spinal arteries around the whole spinal cord. So you can see this. The segmental artery of T11 is very large and known as Arteria radicularis magna or the artery of Adam Kiwis. This artery of T11 spinal segment, it is very large and supplies the several segments of the spinal cord that is through upwards and downward. So any blockage in this artery can cause major deficient of the spinal cord blood supply. Talking about the venous channels, uh, there is six longitudinal venous channel, one in the anterior median fissure and one in the posterior median sulcus. Whereas anteriorly there is again two anterior lateral, one on either side of posterior to the anterior nerve root and posteriorly there is two posterior lateral, one on either side of posterior to the posterior nerve root.